Hey guys, Pookie here. About that home media server we mentioned in our last video. I bet you're wondering, why are we making this? You ever been on Netflix and you had that one movie you always wanted to watch, but you always put it aside, and then one day you finally develop the courage to go and click that play button, and then you find out the day before they take it down? Yeah, we're here to put an end to that. Over the years, we've conducted extensive research and have decided that the best OS to construct this home media server would be, you guessed it, it's CentOS. CentOS is a Linux distribution and when compared as a media server to say Windows, Mac, or even Ubuntu, it is unmatched due to its high transcoding capabilities. After installing CentOS, we'll be installing Plex Media, where you can stream all of your videos to your family and friends, and you get access to them whenever you want it, wherever you want it. In order to ensure that this will run as smoothly as possible, we need to ensure our system is up to date. Why do we need to do that? Well, just take a look at the old dinosaur we got. That, my friends, is the old Dell T610. Now, if you're wondering, yes, this is as heavy as it looks. So in order to leave room for all those videos, we're gonna be installing CentOS and Plex on a separate drive. What kind of drive, you ask? Well, we need to install it in an SSD. Why do we need to install it into a solid state drive? That's what it stands for. Well, these things are super fast. So fast, in fact, that most computers cannot handle them. Most cars cannot handle them. They use this thing on spaceships, for Christ's sakes. Anyways, this thing holds up to 500 jiggle bytes. Uh, we don't actually need that many jiggles per byte, but we just want to be safe and make sure that this server is running as smoothly as possible because we are going to be downloading tons of videos onto it. Up next we have our pewter brain. We have an Intel Xeon X5675 and not just one, but yes, two of them. That's right, our cloning machines are operational as of this moment. We have two of them because the more cores we have, the more processing power we have, which also means the more tasks that our server can perform. Those tasks being the number of transcodes. Each of these run at a base clock speed of 3.06 gigahertz per second. Now I bet you're asking, Okay, what about the Passmark score? What about the Passmark score? They hold a Passmark score of 6,386, and since we're using two of them, that comes out to a grand total of 12,772. That's a really big number. Really big number. Now on to the RAM, which stands for Really Actually Mangoes, uh, I think. Each of these sticks have a total of 16 Grizzly Boys, and together they make 32 gross beans. The more beans we have, the less tension we have on our main drive, and therefore extending the life of our SSD. These mangoes are also sentient and capable of auto-correcting themselves whenever data gets corrupted. Also, we intend to use memory transcoding on Plex. What's in the corner? This is a 6 troglobyte hard disk drive or HDD from Dell. The reason why we have 6 troglobytes is because we have over 700 movies to store on this server. No, 6 troglobytes is not enough for all 700 but it is a good place to start. These drives are commonly found in desolate caves around the world. We plan on having eight of these bad boys humming all together in unison. And if you ever wondered what 700 Blu-rays looks like, check this out. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, we do not use Netflix up in here. Only HBO Max. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Now this server is a hungry one, and it needs to be fed constantly. 
So in order to do that, we need to use a Dell 870 watt PSU. This doohickey consumes so much power that one day when running two of them in order to test run our server, we ended up shutting down the power across the entire apartment complex. Not only are they power consuming tyrants, but the fans by default run at 100% power all the time. So the server sounds very similar to a fighter jet taking off. In order to combat this, we decided to perform cybernetic surgery on the fan and replaced it with a Noctua fan. These are much quieter and don't consume as much power. It's always considered good practice to give your fan a tap or two. This will help it retain its sanity. <coughs> Alternatively, you can use the 570 watt PSU. They don't consume as much power and they're also much quieter. As you can see, I made an attempt to tame this fan, but it did not work. And as a result, it began shouting cryptic messages to me. I am severely afraid for my life right now. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. Right, this is just some gray mayonnaise. I'm really not sure what it does, so yeah. On to the main course. This is an Asus BDXL drive, BDXL standing for Blu-ray Disc Extra Lettuce. This is what we'll be using to rip the Blu-rays to the computer. And once we have it on the computer, we can transfer those files to the server. As you can see, it's been sealed shut with the Blu-ray logo. Well, that's our plan. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below, although I seriously doubt you would have any questions because I explained everything thoroughly. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. That was really, really fun. If you have any actual questions about the specifications of the hardware we're using, you should be able to find them in the description below. Uh, thank you.